Hi, I'm one of the Ranger officers here at the Bucks County Fishing Game. We're a club of about 1,700 members, and we're glad to have you come join us. One of the things that we've learned over the years is that there's really two causes of firearm accidents. One is ignorance, just not knowing the rules. And the second is carelessness, knowing the rules and not knowing it, and doing it anyhow. One of the things that is important for us here, Bucks County Fishing Game, is to keep everybody safe, everybody go home without any issues. So let's go over some of the rules here at the, at the club. First off, when you're on the club property, you must have your badge displayed and visible at all times. There's no smoking in the clubhouse, the trap house, or any of the ranges where black powder is being used. Open carry is not allowed on the club grounds at all. You can con uh, carry concealed, but drawing from a holster or any other point of concealment is not allowed. So let's go take a tour of some of our facility. One of the most popular activities we have here at the club is trap. The trap is open to the public and is held on Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, we also have a five stand sporting clays, which is behind me. If you've not shot five stand, it is a blast just to even watch. Tr the targets are coming from all directions, from behind you, straight up in the air, even rolling along the ground uh, like, a, like a rabbit would run. It's, if you are a small game shooter, this is a great activity to, to practice. Some of our rules for a trap is uh, you cannot have any shot that's larger than seven and a half. So that means seven and a half, eight, and nine. Three dram equivalent or less for charge, two and three quarter inch shells, single load unless you're shooting doubles. If you're shooting doubles, you can shoot, you can load up two, but no more than that. Uh, if the trap is not in use, if it's, if it's not currently open, you can set up a ground trap between houses three and four. One of the great benefits that members have here is you can bring two guests with you to come shooting. When you bring a guest, come here and get a guest pass, fill out their name and your member number. And then it is $10 per guest. Put the money into this envelope and put the envelope into this slot. A couple things to remember about bringing guests is you are responsible for all of their act actions. If they break a rule, it's as if you broke the rule. So you want to make sure you have your guests uh, under, under your control at all times. Because of that, it's important to know that you, the guests have to remain with you all the time. If your guest wants to shoot pistol and you want to shoot rifle, you have to choose one or the other because the guest has to be shooting rifle when you're shooting rifle and you can shoot pistol when they're shooting pistol. You cannot split up. So the first thing you want to do is to get a guest pass, put their name and your member number on it. And then take the guest pass and put it on their shirt. The guest passes must be displayed and visible at all times, just like your membership card is. Junior members are not allowed to bring guests. It's only the senior members that can bring guests and a maximum of two at a time. And at $10 a day for the entire uh, time that the guests here with you is a, is a deal and a half. Uh, $10 you can spend more than that to, to shoot an hour at a lot of the commercial ranges. So, so for $10, it's certainly a great deal for you and your guest. And if the ranges are busy, we ask that the guests be shooting from the same bench and position that you're shooting from, so we're not tying up the bench for, uh, against other members. So the first thing you want to do is to get a guest pass, put their name and your member number on it, and then take the guest pass and put it on their shirt. The guest passes must be displayed and visible at all times, just like your membership card is. Junior members are not allowed to bring guests. It's only the senior members that can bring guests and a maximum of two at a time. And at $10 a day for the entire uh, time that the guests is here with you is a, is a deal and a half. Uh, $10 you can spend more than that to, to shoot an hour at a lot of the commercial ranges. So, so for $10, it's certainly a great deal for you and your guests. Another popular activity we have here at the club is archery. Archery is open every day from sunrise to sunset. Uh, a couple of things that are important to uh, keep in mind is that broadheads are not allowed anywhere on the property. You don't shoot uh, the field arrows only. Uh, and always shoot in your, in your lane, just like you, on the rifle range, no cross shooting is allowed. When you come to a club and want to go down the range, you need to take your membership card and put it against the reader to open up the gate. Reminder is that no guest cars are allowed beyond this point.
We also have a manual thrower and patterning board available for our members to use. The rules on the manual thrower are very similar to the trap fields. Two and three quarter inch shells only. Lead shot, maximum of seven and a half. Single load except for doubles. Buckshot and slugs are not allowed when using the patterning board. No hand throwers are allowed. And on the patterning board, nothing larger than a number two shot. As we have at all of our ranges, we have a sign in for whenever you come in and use the, the area. Our range is open Monday to Saturday at 10 o'clock and on Sunday at 11 o'clock. The ranges close at different times during the year based upon when the sun's going down. You can always tell what time the ranges are going to close displayed on the clock here, at the clock at the entrance to the uh, ranges, as well as at the sign-in table at the 100-yard range. The ranges are closed three days a year. They're closed on New Year's Day, Easter Sunday, and Christmas Day. We also close early at 3 o'clock four days a year. Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, and Thanksgiving. Our range is closed for police training twice a year, two days each time. You'll know that that's happening because it will be displayed here at the entrance to the 100 yard range as well as on the uh, club website. Just a reminder that your badge must be displayed at all times when you're using the range. If you have a guest with you, their badge must be displayed also and the guests must remain with you at, whenever you're on the range. When you come down to check for the canoes, find what you think is going to be the last one. When they come up close to you, yell and ask them if they are the last one in, in line. If they are, wait for them to get past you until they're out of sight, and then mosey on back. Take your time to get back to the, to the range house. That bell lets us know that there's a canoe or a kayaker in the area. We are surrounded on three sides by the Neshaminy Creek, and we have a lot of times, especially in the spring or after a big rain, a lot of canoers will come by. And the, the creek goes right behind our ranges. So we have a bell set up down there that they can ring and let us know that they're coming. Whenever that bell rings, it's most important that we stop shooting immediately. Put them down and step away. This is very critical. This is a, a serious safety concern. We then have to walk down and check to make sure that the canoers are past us before we can go to a live action range again. All right, so we have some common rules at all of our ranges here. We can only use paper targets. We cannot use targets with any images of, of people on them. Every time you show up at the range, you need to sign in at the range you're using. Sign in and sign out when you leave. If you move from one range to another, sign out at the range that you're leaving, sign in at the range that you're arriving. You also must sign in your guests. Your guests will sign in using your member ID. We use a buzzer and flag system to show the state of the range at all times. When you arrive, if you're the first to arrive, take the ceasefire flag, this yellow and black flag, and put it on display. When we are, have the yellow and black flag displayed, we're at a ceasefire, a cold range. Actions must be open, magazines removed, chamber flag inserted. Once you do that, you move behind the red line and stay behind the red line while we are in ceasefire. The only thing you can do in front of the line is you can collect your brass, you can set up a chronograph, and you can go hang targets. Everything else you need to wait for until we are at an active range. This includes loading the uh, magazines. When we want to change from one state of range to another, the buzzer will go off. When that occurs, all of the flags need to be changed simultaneously. So hold your flag and wait for any of the other active ranges to be ready to change flags. At that point, we can change flags at the same time to go from, in this case, a ceasefire to an active fire state. When we're on active fire, the range is hot. Nobody, no cross firing is allowed. So if you go down and you set up your targets in on board eight and you come in and your uh, guns are set up at table seven, you have a choice of either moving your target or moving your guns. You, you cannot shoot from table seven to targets eight. You must shoot in the lane that you are, are using. 
when we're going back from a ceasefire to a live fire range, the range is closest to the 100 yard range is the one that will determine when we're going to go live. The reason for that is because this is the only range that has view of all of the other targets. The other ranges are blocked by the, the foliage from seeing the uh, left, the rightmost targets on the 100 yard range. When the range is active, as I said, nobody is allowed in front of the, of the firing line. No rapid firing is allowed. We define rapid fire as needing to wait two seconds between shots. Eye and ear protection must be used at all times. At all times, firearms must be pointed downrange. Do not have them pointing in any other direction. You can only handle firearms when the range is active. So if you are ready to go home and we're in a ceasefire, you have to wait until we go back to a live fire before you can pack any of your firearms and leave. When we're under a ceasefire, everybody must be behind the red line. Nobody is allowed in front of the firing line except to hang targets, set up a chronograph, and please brass. No touching of firearms or magazines is allowed during ceasefire. Your actions must be open, your magazines out, and your chamber flag in. Chamber flags are available for your use at each of our ranges. Benches are available for your use. If you would prefer to shoot prone or standing and the bench is in your way, feel free to move the bench back. Just when you leave, put it back where, where you found it. So for your reference, range rules are displayed at each of our ranges. If you aren't sure exactly how one rule is worded, easy reference is right here at the range. In our middle shed, we have a 50 yard range to the left and a 25 yard range to the right. At any of our ranges, there's three types of rounds that are not allowed to be used. You're not allowed to shoot incendiary, tracers, or armor piercing. Additionally, here at the 25 yard range, we are limited to muzzle loaders, handguns, 22 caliber rimfire rifles, and lead cast bullets. Those are the only rounds that are allowed to be used here at the 25 yard range. A lot of people want to, to zero in their AR rifles at 25 yards. You cannot do that here at this range. You need to go to the 50 yard range to do that. Our third house is for our pistols. We have a 25 yard range and a nine yard range. This is for pistol calibers only. I know there's a lot of handguns that will shoot rifle such as uh, the Thompson Contender. Even though that's a handgun, you're only, and it looks like a handgun and shoots like a handgun, the caliber is not a handgun caliber and is not allowed to be used in this range. This is for handgun calibers only. One of the things that's important to remember at our pistol range, and in fact at all of our ranges, is drawing from a holster is never allowed. If you want to use a firearm that you use on, as a daily carry, take it out of the holster before you come to the range. Our final position for us to talk about today is for the muzzle loaders. A couple of things that are important to remember about muzzle loaders is that our rules at this range is that the muzzle loader is considered loaded as soon as you put a charge in it. You don't have to have the projectile loaded. You don't have to have the primer or cap loaded either. As soon as that charge goes in, it's considered loaded. If we're going from a live fire situation to a ceasefire situation and the muzzle loader is partially loaded, we cannot con complete going to a ceasefire until that muzzle loader is shot. So the shooter should signal to the, all the other ranges, I have a hot one, to let them know that you are not ready to go to a ceasefire range. Finish loading and fire, at which point in time you can let them know that we're ready to go ceasefire. The one exception to this is if the canoe bell goes off. If the canoe bell goes off because this is a critical safety situation, the muzzle loader must be taken and, put, and racked immediately a chamber flag put into the muzzle to identify that it's partially loaded and then step away until the canoers are clear and we can go back to a live fire range. One of the other things we have for our muzzle loader range is we have some steel silhouettes set up. One of the things that kids love to do is take their 22 rifles and shoot the silhouettes. You really can't hear them plink, but you can see them moving and that gives immediate feedback to the shooters that they've, they've hit their target. It's a lot of fun for kids and adults alike. Our rules state that any range can call ceasefire at any point in time. Just because you're allowed to doesn't mean that you should. If you're just arriving at the range, you don't know how long that people have been shooting. If they've only been shooting for five minutes, hitting the buzzer so you can go hang up your targets is 
frankly, just rude. Talk to the people, find out how long they've been shooting. If they've been shooting for 20 minutes, they're probably ready for a ceasefire. But if it's only been five or 10 minutes, please give them the courtesy and let them continue to shoot while you're getting your, your equipment ready. The big exception to this is during the CMP matches. When a CMP match is, is being held, they have full control of the range going from live fire to ceasefire and back again. Obviously, an exception to this is if there's an emergency and you need to hit a ceasefire. Other than that, allow the CMP to, to control the range. If you've not seen a CMP match, come on out and take a look at them. Some of the shooters we have here are frankly amazing. They are incredibly great shooters. If you want to participate, they would be happy to have you. They'll give you the training that you need to participate in, in their matches and they'll welcome you as one of the family. Here at the end of our driveway is our parking lot for the ranges. Vehicles are not permitted past this sign. That doesn't mean that you can't go beyond. What a lot of people like to do is park here and walk back to the creek and go fishing. It's a, it's a popular thing for a lot of our members to do. One thing to keep in mind though is you do not want to go left of the canoe sign because that will bring you back behind our ranges and that would not be a good thing to do. So we've given you a nice overview of all of our grounds here and have talked a lot about the rules. But let's make sure you understand each of the rules and I'll read them to you now. Any unauthorized use or destruction of club property is strictly prohibited and may result in criminal prosecution and financial restitution. The use of or being under the influence of alcohol, drugs, or sedating medications are prohibited on all ranges. Smoking is prohibited in the clubhouse, the trap house, or any range using black powder. Concealed carry is permitted in accordance with Pennsylvania state laws. However, open carry of firearms is prohibited on club property. Violation of this rule will result in a permanent loss of membership. The shooting hours are Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. until closing. Sunday from 11 a.m. until closing. Closing times are, will be posted on the time clocks. Archery is available from sunrise to sunset. The ranges are closed three days a year. Christmas Day, New Year's Day, and Easter Sunday. Ranges will close early four days a year at 3 p.m. on Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, and Thanksgiving Day. Normally two days in the spring and two days in the fall police training will be taking place on the ranges. During this time, our ranges will be closed. The dates will be posted at the 100 yard range shed and on club websites and calendar. We use a flag and buzzer system to show the state of the range. The yellow and black striped flag designates a ceasefire. Open actions, unload and remove magazines and stay behind the red line. Do not stand or sit at the benches during a ceasefire. You may only hang targets police brass, and set up chronographs. Handling of firearms, ammunition, or magazines is prohibited during a ceasefire. Red flag designates that the range is in operation for live fire. The range is hot. No one will move forward of the, far, of the firing line. The buzzer and strobe light system is used to alert all shooters of a pending change to a ceasefire or live fire condition. Upon sounding of the buzzer during a live fire, all shooting must stop immediately and all firearms must be made clear and safe. The possible exception is muzzleloaders who must discharge their firearm before the range is considered safe. Once everyone has returned from downrange and all ranges agree that they are clear to resume live fire, the buzzer is sounded and the flags are changed. Firing may resume. The 100 yard range, if manned, shall make the final decision to resume live fire. A bell signal indicates that a canoeist is coming down the creek. Cease fire is sounded. The line is made safe and flags are changed. Someone must go down past the 100 yard berm and verify that the canoeist has passed through the area to ensure their safety before returning to live fire. Upon entering the club grounds, all members must clearly wear their membership cards so they are visible at all times. Guests must also have their guest pass visible. Eye and ear protection must be worn when shooting. Rapid fire is not permitted on any range except where expressly authorized during club affiliated matches. Rapid fire is defined as firing consecutive shots faster than every two seconds. Only two guests are permitted with any adult member at one time. Junior members may not bring a guest. The member must fill out a guest pass 
and deposit the $10 guest fee in the box provided. Club members are responsible for their guest actions at all times. Guests are to remain with a member who signed them in at all times. No fee is required for active military guests or active law enforcement. You must sign in at the proper station before using any firearm, archery, or shotgun range. This includes guests who must sign in using the member's ID badge. Any rifle, pistol, or black powder range can call a ceasefire. The 100-yard range or the closest active range to the 100-yard range will be responsible to put the ranges back in live fire operation. When a ceasefire is called, everyone must immediately stop shooting. All actions are opened, remove all cartridges, remove all magazines, and insert an empty chamber flag indicator. Two magazines may remain loaded, but the chamber must be emptied, the action open, and the empty chamber flag inserted. All guns must be pointed safely downrange when being fired or handled at a shooting position. Handling a firearm during a ceasefire is strictly prohibited and constitutes a serious safety violation. If entering the range during a ceasefire, leave your firearm in the case. If not in a case, place the firearm in a gun rack. When making preparations for departing the range and ultimately exiting, do so only during live fire when the handling of firearms is permissible. At no time is a concealed firearm to be drawn from a holster or any other point of concealment and fired on the range. A black powder shooter who still has a loaded firearm when a ceasefire is called must alert all ranges that they have a hot gun and be given time to clear it. Once they are clear, the ceasefire flag can be posted and the range declared safe. In the event of a canoeist creek alarm, the firearm cannot be cleared for safety reasons. The firearm must be racked and marked with a chamber flag and the muzzle as hot until the range is returned to a live fire condition. Targets containing human images may not be displayed on the range. Silhouette targets, however, are permissible. Only paper targets are to be used for shooting purposes, no breakable targets. Pay attention to posted ammo restrictions at individual ranges. No buckshot is allowed anywhere on the property. No cross-firing. You must shoot in the lane you are positioned in. When no one else is using the range you are occupying and you are leaving, remove that flag and install it in the holder located at the ground level. For black powder, all muzzle loaders can only be primed or capped at the firing line. No loaded guns at the loading bench under a ceasefire flag. No wolfing in the barrel, that's blowing down the barrel. <clears throat> 22 caliber rimfire rifles may be used at the 50 yard muzzle loader range. For archery, all shooting must be done on established ranges. Only shooting your range, no cross firing. All shooting will cease when a person is downrange. No backtracking through the 3D course. No broadhead arrows are allowed on the club property. For trap, the use of a hand thrower is prohibited. A mounted thrower is installed in the fenced-in area for your use. You must shoot from this area within the upright posts. All shells must be no larger than two and three quarter inches and contain lead shot only, nothing larger than seven and a half shot. All guns must be loaded singularly unless shooting doubles, then two shells may be loaded. Ground traps can only be placed between trap houses three and four when the trap fields are not in use. No one may enter the trap fields when they are being used for shooting. On the shotgun patterning board, no slugs or buckshot are allowed. No shot larger than number two is permitted. Shoot from the provided yardage positions only. Obey the rules. Be safe. Don't be sorry. All of our ranges are under 24-hour ca camera surveillance. Anyone caught violating the club rules will be brought before the disciplinary committee, which can result in an action up to and including loss of membership. Your membership card must be surrendered at the request of any range officer or Board of Governors member. All club members are charged with knowledge of the range rules. If you don't know, ask before doing. <laughs>